Hello everyone. Hello. Welcome back to our next instalment on our study series in Ezekiel. It's lovely to see you all. For those watching online, please pause this video now and turn in your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 40, reading from verse 5 to verse 27, as we have already done so together here. Let's commit, commit this meeting to our Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Loving and Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you have done and all that you do to sustain us. The breath of which I speak is a gift from you. We thank you that everything in creation declares your truth. And as we come to study together this, this temple vision given to Ezekiel, I pray, Lord, that we may see the beauty and the wonder of Christ Jesus within these designs. Yes. Lord God, I pray that you'll open our minds to see you in these words and open our hearts to receive you through them preached. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so we've just read through together Ezekiel chapter uh, 40 uh, from verse 5 to 27. And um, what we have here is, is building plans. Um, and they're specifically building plans of the outer court. And these plans were part of a vision that, that God gave to Ezekiel. And as we discussed in our last study, this vision had multiple dimensions to it, didn't it? Firstly, it spoke to Ezekiel's generation of God's children. It spoke to, to Israel. Um, who were, you'll remember, at the time, a crestfallen people. <coughs> they had been scattered, destroyed, taken into exile. And this vision that God gave Ezekiel was giving them great hope for the future. It's telling the people of Israel at the time that you will be brought home. You will be gathered and blessed. And God will dwell with you once more because there's going to be a temple. Amen? The vision also looks beyond that time. It looks further to the promised Messiah's rule, the, the rule of King Jesus. Uh, this time now, the Gospel Age. And we'll come to see this in our study. So, to begin, I think it's wise that I summarise what we've just read. Because cubits are not clear measurements <coughs> today, are they? No. So the, the sacred area, which is the, the temple itself, the measurements here, in today's money, it's 875 square feet, which is 30 foot square. It's about 30 foot, the length of this hall, isn't it? So, square. So you could double this hall. And that's, that's the temple in the middle. And then what we have here from that temple is the outer courtyard. And this courtyard is surrounded by walls that are 10 foot high. And 10 foot wide. So they're really thick walls and 175 feet from the wall on the west wall is where the sacred area is located why is it on the west well when Adam and Eve sinned they were cast out weren't they which way were they cast out eastward so to come back to God is to come westward and I joke about this because God took me from London and brought me to Wales so I could be saved. 
West. Yeah. Pet shop boys. <laughs> Go West. Yeah. So to meet with the Lord is to go west. Now within these large walls, so 10 foot and then that thick, in each corner of the, 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 the square perimeter, there was a kitchen for the priests. So they would, tack the, uh, they would take the uh, sacrificial meals and, and prepare them in the corners. And then what you have are uh, uh, 10 rooms on each wall and um, these rooms were again for the priests to take confessions and to pray for people and these rooms were split into two groups of five because in between them were the big gates am i painting a picture for you so these these rooms are where the watchman would would stay and um, it helped you understand as you entered the area through the walls that you're, you're in holy ground. Because as soon as you pass through those walls, you're hearing people pray for you. Isn't that beautiful? We can learn from that, can't we? Wouldn't it be amazing if we had a, a team by the front door on a Sunday that would pray for people as they walk past? Perhaps we should do that. Be lovely, wouldn't it? What has fascinated me the most, though, is the space of the, the outer court. It's huge. It's 400,000 square feet in today's measurements. Um, I've worked that out in the language of the Welsh Valleys. It's 17 rugby pitches. <laughs> That's a big space, isn't it? And in this outer court of Ezekiel's vision, rather interestingly, there is no separate area for the Gentiles. Neither is there separate areas for women. Because all can come. There are gates on every side to allow you to come from every corner of the earth and head west back towards God. Isn't that beautiful? Everyone can come in any direction, every tribe and nation, they can gather and go west towards God. Why can they do that? Well, because of the Messiah. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. His perfect life he gave to be the once and for all atonement sacrifice for all to come by faith. Praise his name. In Christ we have our circumcision. In Christ we have our Torah. In Christ we have our sin offering. In him we are clean, we are washed by the blood, so we Gentiles can come into God's presence and mix with the Jew. 400,000 square feet of space. That means that there is room for everyone to come. Hallelujah. This is what this architecture is screaming out. Welcome. You say it with me? Welcome. In Christ all can come. Isaiah 56 verse 7. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Yeah. Ephesians 2.14 For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one, and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Revelation 7 verse 9 After this I looked, 
and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and all peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. This is 500 years before Christ's birth and it all points to him. Ezekiel is given the design plans of a temple up a mountain that can only be realised through the Messiah. It's a design plan, as you'll come to see in the next few studies, where every cubit, every brick, every paving slab, every bit of mortar, it points to Jesus. Amen? Amen. The design itself screams out the gospel. It screams out that on the cross, Jesus paid it all. His blood washes us clean. So Galatians 3.23, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. Amen? No male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. What a wonderful verse. Everyone who wishes to come can come to God. Everyone who wishes can enter into the Holy of Holies. Because the gates are wide open and there's space for all. All we've got to do is repent, turn from the world and walk towards God. You walk through those big thick walls where the saints are praying you welcome. The design of the outer court declares that there is room for you. I'll leave it there. Amen. 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 Amen.